Hello, my name is Janet Nye, and this is Karen Houghton. We are here from Houghton Horns to interview a very special guest and friend of ours, Steve Flower from Paxman Horns. Steve, why don't you tell us some more about yourself and about the Paxman Instruments? Okay, thank you. Um, nice to be here. Nice to see you. Um, hope to see you next week in, in Midwest anyway. Okay, so I'm Steve, as you've said. Uh, I'm the sales manager here at Paxman which means I've got the, the tough job of dealing with all the international dealers around the world and unfortunately having to go out to all the trade shows. Um, so trips to the States, trips to the IHS symposium every summer when they happen, um, regular trips to Music China and Shanghai, that sort of thing. So it's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. Um, <laughs> but about me, uh, I studied the horn. I went to Trinity College in London. I left there. I played for a number of years, freelancing, doing bits and pieces. I had a spell in the Israel Symphony Orchestra in, in Tel Aviv. Um, and then I did a little bit of teaching and unlike um, you two ladies, I wasn't terribly good at it. And so I soon realized I wasn't doing myself or any of my students many favors. And so I stopped doing that and I kind of moved sideways and I, I knew somebody at Paxman Horns and I started coming in just for the occasional day in the shop and that gradually expanded um, until 2007, I think it was when um, Chris Hunning, who'd been um, MD and part owner of Paxman, left the company and the opportunity came up for me to be sales manager. And that's really when I started what I'm doing now. Uh, how long has Paxman been in business? Well, Paxman as a company um, was founded in 1919. So we had our, our centenary just before the, the start of the whole lockdowns and coronavirus um, pandemic. Um, so it was nice for it to wait so that we could get that in. Um, <laughs> we start, first started producing, um, making horns um, after the Second World War in, I've got the date written over here somewhere, about 1947. Um, but we didn't start doing our own design um, after Dick Merriweather had come over from Australia. So he came over in, I think, 57. And I think the first individual unique Paxman design hall was 1959. And the shop is always called London Home, right? Yep. It's, in fact, where we are now, Southwark, was where the first shop was. Um, it's been in, in Chinatown um, for a long time. was, of course, in Covent Garden, which is when a lot of people of my sort of generation will, will remember it from. Um, and then it moved out back to Southwark to Union Street address, which is about a mile and a bit down the road. And then we've been in this address for, I think about four years now. I, time's terrible with, the, with everything that's gone on and everything being shut down. I kind of yeah. think it's yeah. years to it. But, been a lot going on, especially if you just moved to that location four years ago. So how did, the whole COVID pandemic experience, how has it Im impacted you guys? Um, um, initially, I mean, one of, one of the last shows we did was TMEA 2020. Um, after that, there was the, the travel ban was imposed. So we've not been to any shows since then. Um, and then as things got worse, lockdown happened. So the shop was shut. Um, everyone here was put on furlough for a while. So there was nothing happening. You know, we, we kind of put out, I put out the old Facebook post, but there was, there was no actual business or anything like that happening for, I think from, it was from the end of March until about mid July. Um, and then we were allowed to open up a little bit and have some people in. And so we brought some staff back so we could then restart doing mail order, that kind of thing. Um, personally, I was still working from home because most of what I do is, is email and different time zones and all that sort of thing. Um, then of course there was another lockdown and then it opened up again. So we're kind of really hoping that that's it for, for being shut. Yeah. We can get out. 
Well, I mean, obviously, we, we've got a few shows coming up with the Midwest coming up, TMEA, NAM's been delayed until the summer. At one stage, it looked like that was going to be relatively straightforward, and then the new variants crop up, and we're all a little bit more on tender hooks. But um, I'm I'm hoping that we'll we'll soon be able to to travel a bit more, and we'll we'll all get used to some sort of new normality. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys survived. There were a lot of businesses that didn't. Yes. So. Yeah. Yes, we need our Paxman horns. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So what's new at Paxman? Do you guys have any new products coming out or? We've, we've had quite a busy time, funnily enough. But having, having said that, you know, everyone was shut at home. Um, we've had some new things coming out through production. Some of it was, was earmarked. Quite a lot of it was earmarked before we were shut down. So um, if we go back to 2019, we started off for the centenary. We did a series of... Um, Centenary triple horns. So the Paxman full triple horn, um, which changed design in 1984, 85. It changed the changed rack of the horn. And there have always been people who hankered after the old ones, the way it always happens. Um, so we decided for the centenary, we would produce one for each month of that year. So we built 12 old style triple horns which were very successful. Um, they're all gone. Um, if you want one, you can't have one of the limited edition ones, but we are going to carry on producing them in that style. So that's that's one thing. Following on from that, we also decided to do the same with Descant Horn, so a B-flat high F double Descant in the old pre-85 style. That is now available. The first ones are coming through production and going out. The, they seem to be very popular. So again, it'll be nice to be able to go to shows and show people these things. Right. Um, two other quick things. Um, the Model 23, we've redesigned just so it's it's got a smaller feel under the left hand. Part of the old design meant it was a very big hand position. That's now changed. And we also did, following the article that was in the, I think, February edition of Horn Call about um, a horn for Dennis Brain's 100th birthday, which was single B flat with a high E flat ascending valve and an F extension. Um, we made that a reality. So we've, we've built that. Um, lots of people are trying it. We've had some interest. And again, we're, we're keen to get it out because it's all very well watching a video or reading about it, but until you can actually play the thing, yeah, wow. nobody's going to buy the for one. So we're we're keen to get out and show that around. Wow, you guys have been busy. That's a lot of great stuff. <laughs> so, what's your what's your personal favorite thing about working at Paxman? <laughs> Probably the variety. I mean, I I love the travel. I love going out. You know, going to different places, seeing different people, different cultures, different foods, different beer. Even though English beer is always the best. Um, <laughs> what do you want to eat when you come to Texas? <laughs> <laughs> oh, barbecue. We've got that barbecue. <laughs> yeah, <I> mean... <laughs> um, so all, all of that, I mean, the, the variety of people in the shop as well. You know, one, one minute you can have one of the best horn players in the world and you, I just, you, just, you just sit there with your jaw on the floor and kind of go, people can do that in a hall? Really? <laughs> and then, then you get a, a, a young kid coming in, playing, playing a tiny little horn and playing his first notes and you think one day they can be that. So, yeah, what's not to like, really? So, so along those lines, what has been or who has been the most memorable guest? Can you think of one? I can, well, let's, for the, for the time being, let's cast aside all the memorable horn players who have come in. If I could upstate and give you three as a non-horn playing musician. We had Winton Marsalis in, who was getting, I think, some work on his trumpet done. That was that was a good few years ago. Um, we've had an ex-prime minister, um, John Major, um, and his wife were at the, at the old shop. We were we were there, and a couple of large gentlemen came down the stairs and had a look round, <laughs> and saw that we weren't going to do anything dodgy. And then in came John and Norman Major, because their their daughter is a horn player. So they were in to get some bits and pieces for her. Probably the most famous person that we've ever had in was Ewan McGregor, who was 
filming a, a short film down the road and he had made a mock-up of a, of a tube station, um, a subway station, and having walked past the shop, because he used to be a horn player, he oh, wanted to yeah. have someone carrying a horn case. And so he came in and he said, any chance I could borrow a horn case, I'm doing this. And, you know, we, we talked about it. He said, no problem. And he said, well, I'll send my PA down in a bit. And he, he walked out of the shop and somebody came out of the workshop and said, that guy looked like Ewan McGregor. <laughs> It was you and McGregor. Oh. Came out, what do you mean it was you and McGregor? Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> and he was just an ordinary nice guy. He was, he yeah. loved, borrowed the horn case. Um, unfortunately, he did want an Alexander crocodile skin case because they were the ones he remembered. So I found one of those and stuck Paxman stickers all over the side of it. <laughs> Very smart. <laughs> Great. That was wonderful. <laughs> So what is something unique about the Paxman company? Um, well, our horns. Um, our horns are based on Dick Merriweather and Bob Paxman's designs that started, as I said earlier, in, in the, the late 50s. Um, the Merriweather system of airflow, where it goes the same direction through the valve block on both the F and the B flat side, all of that, the way the valves turn in sympathy with the airflow, that's all to Paxman, to the professional Paxman horns. Um, the actual layout of the horns is something that's unique to Paxman. Um, you, know, you, you can find any number of examples of, of Gaia wrap horns, of Knopf wrap horns, um, even copies of, you know, there are lots of people who have copied the, the Alexander 103, for example. But if you want a Paxman 20, it's a Paxman 20. A Paxman 23. The Paxman Descant and Triple have, have been copied a little bit more because we were really the first people to produce successful triple horns and Descants. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just that uniqueness. And it's it's nice to be able to carry on that, that legacy of, of Bob and Dick Merriweather. Yeah. So you mentioned that you're the sales manager at Paxman. So how many other employees are there in the company? one of those questions that always stumps me a bit because we've got various people who don't work a full week so you've got kind of part people who was some people who will do three days the workshop do funny hours because they work monday to thursday but they start early in the morning um i did ask someone i cheated on this one and i asked and said what's the kind of equivalent of full-time employees and it was probably somewhere between six and seven so i mean we're still a small company oh. um, because that includes manufacturing and yeah, this side of the workshop door as it were. Now I know I've met you and John traveling, but where is your favorite place that you've ever traveled to visit one? Other than Texas, you mean? Oh, it's, you know, it's, of no. course it's Texas, but <laughs> you can choose some other places. We won't be offended. Um, I think of the places I've, I've been, I, again, I would probably pick three. Um, I loved San Francisco. I'd always wanted to go to San Francisco. And apart from getting horribly sunburned so that my forehead ended up looking like an Alexander crocodile skin case, um, <laughs> it was it was wonderful. A very, very laid back kind of place. Um, love that. Um, Shanghai, I mentioned, that's uh, anywhere in China is, is just such a kind of eye opener. I mean, Shanghai is a very to a degree Western kind of place, but it's, I mean, it's still China. Um, and what was the other one I was going to mention? I just immediately thought of, thought of two more. St. Petersburg was beautiful, um, but that wasn't what I was going to say. Uh, Brisbane. Brisbane. Wow. You've been so many places. Oh, no. That's exciting. That's, it's, well, as I say, that's one of the things I enjoy about the job. In all your travels, have you had any near misses or accidents with any of the horns? We've had a couple of times. We've had a couple of shows where horns got held up in customs. So we were sitting there. That fortunately, we always tend to carry one as, as personal luggage. So we, John and I were there, and I think we had three horns between us. Yeah. Um, the one that probably the most dodgy thing was in Shanghai where it was the first time I'd, I'd been to a show in Shanghai and done the show on my own. 
Um, so I'd, I'd flown out and I got off and from, from the airport in Shanghai, they have what's called the maglev train. Um, so it, it's one of these floats on this like magnetic levitation and it goes at about 400 kilometers an hour and it takes you into Shanghai and you stop off in the station and then you have to get out and you have to follow all the signs. And of course, everything's in Chinese. There is English as well, but it's just that little bit slightly disconcerting. You follow the line to the taxi. There was a big long queue for the taxis. I've prepared everything. I've got the name of the hotel written down in Chinese. I got there, came to my turn, got to the taxi, put everything in, in the boot of the taxi. I was climbing into the back seat thinking, right, here's my name of the hotel. I thought, shouldn't I have another bag? Oh. And I suddenly realized that a brand new Model 83 compensating triple horn. Oh no. Be anymore. Oh. And it had been left on the luggage rack of the maglev train. So, of course, a bemused Chinese taxi driver, as I jumped out, said, no, no, sorry, sorry, grabbed everything out of the boot. Um, trunk, sorry, you'd say. Um, ran back up the stairs, went onto the platform, and somehow made myself understood that I'd left a triple French horn on the luggage rack of this train and understood that the cleaner had been along, found it, taken it off, put it in the office, and I was reunited with my horn. Oh my gosh. And then you had to <laughs> your pants, right? I was nice gin and tonic when I got to the hotel. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's that horrible. So, I'm glad it ended well, that yeah. story. <laughs> I'd still be paying for it if it hadn't. Oh my yeah. goodness. Well, I'm glad that's the only story you have to tell like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are a few more. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, we absolutely love talking to you and being with you and learning more about Paxman. So we can't wait to see you. But what are you looking forward to at TMEA, either during the exhibits or when you're not in the exhibits? Well, during the exhibits, it's, it's going to be, I mean, it'll be different this year. I guess everyone's going to be wearing masks and all that kind of thing, and except when they're playing, of course. So it'll be, in a way, a new experience. Um, I mean, TMEA is always great because it's it's so huge. People people who haven't been to it don't really know, um, but it, it, it is astonishing. Um, so, I mean, that that is always great to be at. Outside the exhibit hall, I like San Antonio. Um, I like in the mornings because jet lag kicks in. I can get up, I go for a run alongside the canal. I come back, um, get some breakfast into the hall. And then in the evenings, as we said earlier, there's always, there's always a good barbecue. Um, margaritas, yeah. Margaritas, of course, yeah, yeah. So it's just, it's nice being with you guys. So just generally look forward. It's, again, it's a show I look forward to every year. Yes, I would like to visit you one day, but I am excited that you're coming. <laughs> so we'll have a very safe travels to Texas and we will see you soon. Thank you very much. Not at all. Lovely to see you and well, see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.